Hi everyone, so this is Federico and uh, this evening uh, we are doing a sharing on uh, operative mockup. First of all, something different compared to the other, the other evening, the other episode of this aesthetics channel because uh, this time we have it in English and not in Italian. Why? Because uh, I asked in a story uh, some days ago uh, on Instagram story, in Insta story, do, do you want to have it about operative mocap in Italian or in English? And 51% uh, said English. So I'm doing this uh, in Italian, but the good news uh, is that um, I will remake this episode in Italian version probably tomorrow evening as well. So if you want to follow it uh, in English, uh, even if you are Italian, it's okay. Otherwise, um, uh, probably tomorrow evening, I will do in Italian and I will talk in Italian. So le let's uh, start about uh, the, important of, um, the importance of operative mocap. So that type of mocap that we are doing, we are performing when we want to do, uh, define the prep, when we want to do the prep on our, in example, anterior teeth, uh, in example, on... Um, uh, indirect veneers uh, or uh, partial restorations. So I'm going uh, to share the screen. I'm uh, now live on YouTube and on my Facebook account. And uh, I do a small intro and then I will switch definitely on YouTube. So if you are not uh, following me on, uh, on YouTube, uh, also on Instagram, I, I'm sharing a live now and uh, in a while I'll be uh, just on YouTube and I will close the Instagram uh, live. So if you want to follow the full episode, uh, move to YouTube on Federico Ferrari's channel. So what's happened? We have our protocol. I really believe on protocol for excellence and I really believe on this type of of approach that is the synergic restorative it means that we have three type of protocols in order to succeed in our profession as restorative as uh, clinicians and uh, the, be the, the, the most important one is the clinical one but for sure the communication and management is uh, are very very important so at the moment, I want to focus uh, on uh, clinical protocols and I want to talk about this operative MOCA. I want to start um, from uh, the, uh, from the, uh, the same uh, pictures that uh, I spoke in the previous episode that was in Italian, <laughs> uh, uh, um, in, in, to be honest. But uh, where we were talking about the different um, uh, purposes of a mocap, and the operative mocap is one of those purposes. And um, in this case, we have a case uh, of a of a girl, a young girl that wants to uh, increase the dominance of the lateral, that wants to re um, uh, substitute the uh, central incisors, and um, what is important that uh, uh, to substitute the, the, the restoration of the central incisors, what is important to have an idea. So I don't want to bother you now with this um, with this um, uh, type of um, planning now because uh, should be a, a, a quite long uh, story in order to, to go into detail on this case. Maybe we can see another episode. But what is important now that we consider that uh, we have to replicate uh, the works up on a mocap, and then we have also to, to make it in, uh, in something that um, is um, precise also when we have to... to to arrive to the prep phase uh, and when we have to uh, take our burr in our hands and then to define the, the design that we need in order to restore with an indirect way 
disappear. So what we do usually, we use a mocap that um, is a mocap uh, um, with uh, a, a resin that is uh, self-curable. I prefer for many reasons, I don't want to stay now on this, uh, this type of translucent uh, silicon um, keys uh, with a quite hard tray that can uh, create this, um, this type uh, of, uh, um, I mean, rigid and uh, high strength support for our silicon index. So uh, when we arrive, this is a very important, uh, this is a very important um, picture, this one especially, because what is one of the benchmark, one of the references that we have something very precise and uh, um, proper when we do a, a, a mock-up, this type of excess on the gingiva. So once we see that here we have a very, very thin, we have a very, very thin uh, layer that you can remove easily with uh, uh, this type of um, this type of uh, instrument or something like a, a curret, a scalar, or even a probe, uh, just a, a fine and not sharp, not uh, cutting instrument, you know that uh, that amount of resin, uh, it, it's quite ideal. It's quite uh, good in order to have, um, to have uh, something that uh, can replicate properly this. And why? We want so, guys. These guys are from Instagram. I want to, to show you in this way because so you can see also my face. Otherwise, you cannot see. And then, what uh, what what makes sense um, in term of uh, uh, in term of uh, reproducibility? So when you, when you can reproduce properly. Uh, and transfer properly the preparation thickness is when you are doing your grooves on something that is not bulky, is not an, in, a, in excess compared to the original project, but uh, is something that uh, it makes sense in this type of uh, um, of thickness. So, in example here, if uh, you go here. And you can see here half a millimeter of excess on the gingiva. And you didn't wax the gingiva. You didn't do a wax up or a digital project on the gingiva. You are quite sure that you will have a, a thickness of the previsualization. And you use it as a benchmark of thickness of your project something that is wrong. So this is very important. So once you want to use an operative mockup, operative mockup it means that you are going to prep through the mockup, but not the full prep, but just the uh, depth uh, grooves that you need in order to decide how much tooth you have to touch. In this case, what it makes sense that first step, first step is uh, okay. You need to have something that is absolutely uh, precise on the project. And how to do it, how to watch it? Watching it, uh, considering uh, the excess of the material in the areas where you didn't create uh, an additional project, where you didn't have uh, a um, works up or a, a, a Anyway, a uh, build up of an area. Okay, this uh, as a first step. So, going ahead uh, with this, uh, we see here another case. In this case, uh, we did uh, different type uh, of um, restorations. I mean, uh, we had uh, also here. I want to do a long story short, but we 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 foreseen here. A uh, veneer, a veneer, a veneer, and a crown. In this case, we had just uh, 
a, 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 a thin layer, buccal layer of enamel, and the rest was in this novital lateral, uh, just a bulky buildup, very huge buildup. But I, want, I don't want to stay here, but here for sure we did uh, bleaching, we remake uh, this buildup, we remove this uh, uh, fourth class. This is the, the, the mock-up, the operative mock-up. And then uh, you can see how once we go to prep here, doing the grooves in an operative mock-up. Operative mock-up, it means during the operative stage of the uh, preparation, you know the calibrated thickness of this burr, and you know what is the thickness that you are preparing on your uh, own mock-up. So this is a benchmark in order to be sure that in that specific area, you will have at least that amount of thickness of material that you would like to have. In this case, 0 0.5, okay? So this is a, uh, quite important. And quite important that it's not bulky, it's not in overhang. This is uh, something that could be, for many of you, very simple, very regular, nothing strange. But in my opinion, and what I see in some lectures, is something that we have to underline uh, with uh, high uh, importance. Because uh, we have to see that, uh, go, I'm going back, we don't have this bulky resin here. Just in this case, I'm able to do something like uh, a preparation, reduction preparation here, and then I'm able to be sure that that amount of prep is exactly um, matched with uh, my project, okay? And so I know that I'm not removing more, I'm not removing less compared what I need thinking at the final thickness of the restoration. So now I see that there are some, uh, some guys on Instagram, but uh, first of all, guys, I suggest to you to, to go to YouTube because in a while we will go ahead. And also for all of friends that are following on Facebook, I suggest to follow the other part of this sharing on, um, on uh, uh, YouTube so we can have the comments, we can leave there in a very, uh, I mean, ordered and um, uh, precise way, the, a backup of these contents, okay? So we put uh, something here, a uh, countdown, just one minute, and then we see all each other on YouTube. Okay, here we are. We are going ahead on uh, just on YouTube and um, talking about this type of burr. We have in our protocol two different type of main thickness uh, uh, and burrs. 
So one is basically uh, 0.3. So you can create rooms of 0.3 and the, that one is this one. And we have another one uh, that we can create 0.6. In our protocol, we foreseen this type, these two type of things. So uh, something that is nice in this type of operative mocap is to create these uh, type of groups. But the question is, every time we have to perform veneers or a restoration like this, we need to do this. No, in example, there are some uh, cases, just uh, to give you an example, is if I have a very bulky restoration, bulky veneers made from another dentist, and I have to remove them in order uh, to do the final preparation, to do a, take another impression, digital or analog, doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense that I create a, this type of operative mocap in order to have um, grooves on something that is already bulky. The first step, it makes sense that we remove the previous restorations. Then we check with some guides. I don't want to talk about the silicon guides and the silicon uh, indices, but uh, this, it makes sense. And then in that case, I can decide to print and to mold a mocap or an operative mocap or going straight ahead and uh, to, to finalize my preparations. So um, going ahead, in this case, uh, also in the operative mocap, we have to consider another important aspect. I say, okay, guys, I, I did this type of mocap and it's a mess. Because I had problems, I didn't have spaces, and usually where you didn't have spaces, usually in the proximal areas. Because once you do a, an operative mocap and you don't arrive on the interproximal area and you just stay apart from the interproximal area, you risk don't have the space. Because you risk don't have the full prep, the full groove in that area. But, but, you know the good news, which one is? That uh, if you have indexes, you can do a double check on this. And usually, even if with a mocap, you were quite shy, I mean, then uh, you didn't want uh, to create that type uh, of um, prep in, in the proximal area, you can do a double check with this type uh, of uh, thickness indices. And the good news is the American mocap, someone is saying, okay, I'm wasting material, I'm wasting time, and it's just a bullshit because I don't have to do this. I take a bird that is 0 0.3 and I do my grooves, or I take a bird that is 0 0.6 and I do my grooves, and that's it. But you can see here on this image what is the real value of, of it. Because here you can see the amount of material that we are, we are saving. We save this amount of sound enamel. In this case, these groups are around 0 0.3. So in this lateral that, that was the, the, the most proclined and was a little bit buckal, we really have 0 0.3 of prep. But here, how much? Less than 0 0.1. Probably just a, um, a finishing. And here, here, probably we have 0 0.1 prep. And here again, and here, okay, we have composite, so it doesn't matter. But you can see how when, after you color your mocap and you remove it, you see those areas that you have to touch. And you can discover that if you plan properly your project, you can have many areas that you can save and you don't have to prep at all, okay? And here I want to show you another example of a operative mocap 
in a, this very difficult case, this is a case of veneers upper, lower, from molar to molar, from molar to molar, upper and lower jaw. The previous case is around eight years ago. This one is more or less the same, uh, the same time. Just to tell you that uh, I'm working with the, the similar protocol in the similar manner, uh, because once you have a protocol, you don't have to change every day. This is why for me are so important the clinical protocols. Because you have to decide what is important, what is the step-by-step, -step, and then you, you are going to apply without to change every day, okay? And so um, I don't want to stay that much on it, but you can see what? You can see that we can create a, a 0.6 groove with the half of this bird, that this is the modified chamfer by Domeni Comasironi, is um, uh, a bird that has a, a diameter of 1.2 millimeter. This bird, the half of this bird is um, 0 0.6. In this case, uh, I use the operative mocap, but instead to do a horizontal groove, I prefer to have vertical grooves. And um, I can also use another bird. I don't want to stay that much here, but from the operative mocap here, we can create our depth mark in order to, to see and to decide how much in the incisor area we want to reduce. And then in this case, we create all our groups. And after we create all our groups, we can paint them in this case, my evolution was uh, toward to a gold painting, a little bit more luxury, <laughs> but doesn't matter. It can be blue, can be, be black, it can be gold, doesn't matter. And here, going back, okay, here a small part uh, missing, but you can see, and you can start to perceive where are those areas that we have to touch and where are those areas that we don't have to touch? This is a, a huge benefit, a huge um, type of advantage that we have once we have to optimize the thickness preparation. And then here you can see this. And then here you can see we remove it. Removing this, you can see here, the two, cent the two lateral incisor must be prepared, not everywhere at 0 0.6, because you can see here is just a 0 0.1 maybe, but here you have 0 0.6, here you have 0 0.6, here you have something like zero. Here you have more or less a zero, just a small thing here. You have incisor ledge here that you have to prepare a little bit more, okay? And you can see all the areas of here. You can see all the areas. And then what's happened that now you can calibrate, you can start to calibrate your preparation. Preparing enough in order to leave the space to the technician or to yourself if you want to produce by yourself your veneers and your crowns. But you don't have to remove too much. And you say, okay. What happened if I remove uh, maybe four tenths of millimeter or five tenths of millimeter more? Probably nothing. At the global uh, world, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, the world uh, uh, safety, nothing happened. But it happened something uh, quite uh, important for our job because our Reference is uh, tenth of millimeters, is microns. And once we decide to have this type of uh, accuracy, we have to calculate uh, all the tenth of millimeter. That makes sense. That are important. Those are important. Why? Because uh, you have to preserve in AMA. If you believe in adhesion, you have to, to preserve in AMA. If you believe in adhesion, you have to remove 
only what you need to remove and not more than you need, okay? And this is another important aspect, very important aspect. So this is uh, the first step in order to be accurate, in order to be precise, in order to organize uh, your, uh, I mean, your job in a proper way. Is the only one? No, absolutely. It's not the only one. But uh, I think that in a protocol that is quite uh, uh, accurate, that is quite uh, um, good in terms of excellence of results, this type of step uh, is uh, more or less mandatory. And so we can uh, see here before, we can see uh, after our veneers, these veneers are made by Renato Alcidi, and uh, we have one crown, honestly, and uh, all the other the, the other restorations are veneers. And you can see here before, and you can see here after. Okay, but the good news is that we preserved we preserved structure. And we removed only structure where we need it. Because we had to remove undercuts, because we have to create space, but the, 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 the regular space. So going into conclusion, I want to tell you that uh, operative mocap is a part of a protocol of excellence. Protocols for excellence is the payoff of aesthetics, And we really strive for this type of uh, predictability. And if you think that an operative mocap is a way to waste material and to waste time, you have to ask to yourself if it's more expensive to wrong and to, 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 to be wrong in the preparation in creating the thickness for your restorations or and maybe to do some adjustment maybe to re-prepare maybe to take another impression or maybe to have a restoration that is not adequate consider your expectation and considering the expectation of the patient and then when you put these two options and you try to balance these two i think that in many, many times, like me, you will think and you will conclude that uh, it's not wasting time, in, it's not wasting material, it's not wasting energies, but an operative mock-up is the first proper step for the success. For sure, the, not the only one, because you have to apply a protocol that uh, is... Um, in each steps is for excellence, is for uh, predictability, is for a certain type of result uh, uh, according to the needs and to the expectation of the patient and according to the standard you decide to work. So today we spoke about this mocap. I did this um, episode in English language because uh, in Instagram story, in Insta stories, we asked and 51% of the audience decide to have an English. I will have in Italian as well. Uh, if you have comments, if you have uh, questions, I will be happy to answer you and to, to give you some, uh, some answer. We are planning to have an um, English course an online English course in more modules in our Adesthetic Sed online. So I will update to you. Follow my Instagram, follow my Facebook, this YouTube, or uh, subscribe to our mailing list through our websites, and you will be um, updated. And uh, you will be, um, uh, I mean, always uh, uh, informed about our activities. Anyway, I will be available for, uh, for any kind of, um, of comments. I will, uh, I will be available for um, 
any kind of uh, uh, reflections or questions you want to, to tell. So for the English especially, we are planning after the summer also an event in presence, four days uh, with, a, with a course, but uh, for sure uh, a, good, uh, a good option could be also have some uh, uh, courses and training in our Edu Online aesthetics. So keep in touch. I I have to remove this. And uh, okay, that's it. And so thanks uh, for watching. This content will remain available uh, on, um, especially on Facebook, uh, the first part, but moreover here on YouTube. So. My suggestion is uh, subscribe to the channel, um, go on the bell and uh, uh, activate the notification. And so you will be updated on our next uh, videos uh, and the live or uh, just uploaded videos uh, on educational dentistry, on aesthetics uh, protocols uh, and uh, aesthetics uh, uh, approach for protocols for excellence. So thanks uh, for, for watching and uh, keep in touch and see you next time. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.